In this tutorial, I will take a look at an interesting and rather exciting set of extensions for Inkscape called Jesse Ink that adds JavaScript automatically to your SVG file, allowing one to create an animated presentation that can be opened in a web browser either online or offline. Cool, huh? Yeah, that's what I thought too. I'll be screencasting this in Inkscape version 0.46. I stumbled across Jesse Inc. when researching SVG animation a few weeks ago after a user posted a question to the Inkscape user's mailing list. I downloaded the extensions immediately but ran into some issues on the Windows platform since I was at work at the time. Once I got home that evening I tried it on my Ubuntu desktop and of course it worked flawlessly. That led me to contact the author of Jesse Inc., uh, Hannes Hookreiner, I hope I've pronounced that right who was willing to uh, make some revisions to that so that it worked well on Ubuntu, Windows, and Mac. Uh, thanks to him, it should work f for uh, pretty much everybody now. So enough with the wordy stuff. Let's poke around with Jesse Inc. and see what it can do. All right. First things first, you'll need to go to uh, launchpad.net uh, Jesse Inc. to find the code. Okay, from there you can go to Downloads and pick that Jesse Inc. 100 zip file. Download that and uh, once you download it um, the README file tells you to put it where the Inc. X uh, Python file is located and that happens to be on Ubuntu that's in our user share Inkscape extensions folder. Now if you're a Windows user uh, that would be located in uh, uh, the default location, which I think off the top of my head is something like uh, C, Program Files, uh, Inkscape, uh, Extensions. Um, so take a look there. Um, if you have Inkscape installed somewhere else, um, what you need to do is you need to open up the uh, Jesse Inc. Uh, Python files and uh, change the path inside. It's not difficult to do. Uh, it's just a quick, uh, you know, 10 second thing to do. Anyways, um, once you unzip all the Jesse Inc. Uh, extensions, you need to put all of them inside of this directory. Okay, and there are several here. And you want to be careful that uh, uh, a few times I had to manually right click on all of them and uh, change the, the uh, permissions uh, to myself. Um, so you want to make sure that you double check that too. But all in all, it's uh, it's really kind of a no-brainer. Just stick those scripts in that folder, and uh, you start up Inkscape, and then we'll have it. Okay. Once that is done, uh, you start up Inkscape, and you'll notice under the effects that you have a brand new um, category called Jesse Inc. And inside there are the things that we need to make our presentation. Okay? Now, <clears throat> before I get started with Jesse Inc., I am going to uh, I'm gonna make just a quick and dirty presentation file. I'm not gonna get um, too crazy with the effects or anything like that. I just want to make something that's very clean so that uh, you guys get the idea of how this program works. And the first thing that I'm going to do is set up my document. Okay, so I'm going to go to File, Document Properties. Uh, you guys may want to see my key status. I've made my key status just a little bit smaller uh, so that I could fit it in here. Um, in this episode two, I'm also I'm not using um, Windows for my dialog boxes. I'm docking them to the side since I'm going to be working with the uh, layers quite a bit. So that's kind of different in this episode. Anyways, let's change this to uh, 800 wide by 540 high. And I'm going to change my background color from transparent to fully opaque black. Okay, And I do that because I want my presentation background Oop, let me fix my microphone here. I want my presentation background to be black. So you can set this to whatever color you want, uh, and then it'll load up that way. So I'll go ahead and hit OK there and close this out. 
and uh, this is going to be a very small drawing window I'm sorry but do the best I can to fit it into my screencasting window okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this layer one our default layer by right clicking on it and I'll just call that uh, opening because this is gonna be my opening slide okay and what I'm going to do is draw a rectangle I'm gonna make sure I do not have a stroke turned on and we'll make that uh, I'm using the Ubuntu uh, color palette and we'll make it that dark environmental shadow color and we'll make that 800 wide by 500 high okay I'll go ahead and center that up on my page okay now you might have noticed something that my document is set up for an extra 40 pixels that gives me 20 pixels of space on the top and 20 pixels of space on the bottom when you open an SVG file um, in Firefox after you've applied Jesse Ink extensions um, basically what Jesse Ink is doing is it's scaling your SVG file so no matter how big your uh, let's just say I'm using Firefox no matter how big your Firefox window is your uh, SVG file will scale accordingly okay and what I want is a little bit of a margin on top and bottom so that's why I've done it this way okay so I'm gonna go ahead and save this and I'm gonna open my my browser I'll just hit my home button and I'm gonna load the SVG file that I've just saved I've saved my SGV, or SVG file onto my desktop and what I'm gonna do is left click and just drag and drop that into Firefox okay now you see when it loads up my S SVG file I've got that 20 pixels of of space on the top and bottom you don't really notice it on the bottom because uh, my window is bigger but typically that's what an SVG file looks like in a browser okay it's you know there, there's no JavaScript or anything so it's just displaying the SVG file so it's nothing nothing special to look at okay so I'll go ahead and minimize that okay so where did we leave off now this is gonna be my opening screen so I'm gonna go ahead and close my layer down and I'm gonna add some text and I'll just uh, we'll write out something here all right get my key status back up here I'm gonna go to my text dialog box and I'm going to pick I think it's I think it's Fonten. That's the font that I want. And I'm going to make that 60 pixels. Center that up and I'll hit apply. And we'll make this white. And I'll center that up on my page. Okay, and that's going to be my title. Uh, what I'll do next is I'll add some more text and I'll just put it by heathen X if I make typos I'm sorry I'm the king of of typos so hopefully I don't I won't misspell anything and what I'm gonna do is make that fontin okay and I'm gonna make that let's make that about 28 pixels we'll make that white as well and I'll just slide it down about right here we're just gonna eye this for now like I said this is gonna be just a quick and dirty uh, presentation file okay and that's what I have on my first layer so I'm gonna go ahead and save this we will go back uh, to uh, Firefox I'll leave the key status monitor up I don't think it's too uh, intrusive there and I'll just do a refresh okay now you see my SVG file. Okay, and it looks pretty good to me.
All right. So now that I've got that drawn, I'm going to go ahead and go to my effects, and we're going to use uh, Jesse Ink to install our JavaScript. So we're going to do an install update. Okay. And what Hannes has done is uh, is given us a nice little help description for everything that we're doing. And in Inkscape version 0 0.46, he has told us that you have to add the onload event handler in order to get this thing installed. You won't have to do that in version 0 0.47, but you have to do it in 0 0.46. It's not a big deal. So we're going to open up our XML editor in Inkscape. We're going to add this onload, and we're going to add this little piece of, uh, of information called Jesse Inc. in it, and then an open and close parenthesis sign. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to hit apply here. That adds the code to the SVG file. If we were to open up our SVG file right now in a uh, text editor, you'll see that we have a script installed at the very bottom of the SVG file. Okay? So we open up our XML editor and we go to the very first uh, property and I'm going to add onload, then I'm going to add Jesse Inc. in it, and it's case sensitive. Okay, and then I hit set. That adds this property to our SVG file. I can go ahead and close that out, and I'm going to save this. Now, watch when we open up Firefox again, you notice that this is our code without the JavaScript. As soon as I hit refresh, now I've got my JavaScript installed. So I've got my black background that I made. It automatically centers my SVG file. And I'm not going to do it now because it'll move outside of my screencasting window. But if I were to maximize Firefox uh, just by stretching the window or by uh, pressing F11, you'll, you will see your uh, presentation file totally maximize on your screen. So that's exactly what we want to do. Okay. So that is our opening frame of our presentation file. And when I say presentation, um, what, I'm tr what I'm really comparing it to is something like a PowerPoint or OpenOffice Impress, OK? So we're, but instead, you know, obviously, we're going to use Inkscape to make our presentation. And this will work, you know, anywhere that you have a browser. Uh, if you want to put this SVG file online somewhere on your website, and uh, let people uh, scroll through your presentation. This will work the same way. So it'll work offline and online. So it's it's really neat. All right. So enough with the talking. Let's get back. Okay. So that's my opening frame. And uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to make a brand new layer. And let me get to my notes here. So much to talk about. I didn't want to skip anything. So I made some notes. And I'm going to make this layer called Master Slide. You can call your layers anything that you want. I'm going to put it above my opening layer. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my opening layer off. And, well, before I do that, let me do this. I'm going to right-click on this rectangle and do a duplicate. And I'm going to move that. Uh, duplicated copy to my master slide. Okay, I do that by holding shift page up. Okay, so now when I turn on my master slide, I have that rectangle. That way I don't have to draw it twice. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to turn this red and I'll make this about make it about a hundred high alright and let me draw a line across here I'm gonna hold my control key down hit enter and I'm gonna make this 800 wide and I'm gonna make that stroke two pixels high okay so it's little over 800. Let's get this thing right on 800 here. 
Okay, that's probably good enough. And I'm going to take that, uh, select these two things, and I'm going to center that up on my page. I'm going to hit last selected, and I think it lined the bottoms. Okay, that's what I want to do. And I'm going to take that stroke, or I'm sorry, that path, and I'm going to change the stroke color to white. Okay, I'll go ahead and close that down. Again, a little hard to see in my window, but I'm going to select that uh, stroke that I've, I'm sorry, that path that I've just drawn. I'm going to go to my uh, gradient tool. I'm going to select radial gradient, and I'm going to select uh, create gradient in the stroke, and I'm just going to double click. Okay, make this a little higher there. Okay, and that gives me a kind of faded out highlight right there. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And let's see if that'll show up. Okay, and it does. Now, what I'm doing, look at my key status monitor down here. In order to run your presentation, you're going to use your arrow keys to go back and forth. Okay? So basically how Jesse Inc. works is you make, you put everything on a layer and that will create a slide. Okay? So if you have 10 layers, you're going to have 10 slides to deal with. And we navigate to our slides just by using our arrow keys on our command or on our keyboard. Okay? And what I like to do when I use Jesse Inc. is I like to run uh, Firefox alongside of my presentation file. So as I'm designing something in Inkscape, I can check it to see how it looks in Firefox. Firefox is not the best SVG viewer out there. I think Opera uh, might be the best. Um, maybe something else, I don't know. But that's why you don't want to get too crazy with your presentation file because you're really limited to what your browser can display okay so I think that looks good let me minimize this okay now that's going to become my master slide so what I want to do is I'm gonna to go to effects Jesse Inc and I'm gonna select this master slide and I have this in here already. Uh, typically it's blank uh, when you run it for the very first time. But what he tells you to do is uh, um, I want this background image to be on every single one of my slides. So in order to do that you could duplicate this and put it on all of your layers or you can just make a master slide layer and uh, draw what you want to draw on as far as your background is concerned and then Jesse Inc. knows to use that as a background for the rest of your layers and slides okay but first you have to tell it what layer uh, does your master slide reside on and conveniently enough I've called my layer master slide so I'll type in master slide and hit apply okay now any new layers I create, this is going to be my background. All right. So now that I've got my master slide done, let's go on and make a uh, let's make a new layer, and we're going to call this slide one. Okay. And on my first slide, and you can turn that off or that master slide on. I think. Uh, I like to have it turned on and you can go ahead and lock it too so you don't move elements um, so that's kind of a handy feature there but I'm on slide one I'm highlighted so I'm gonna add some text and we'll call this know your topic and I'm gonna change the font we'll make that centered and we'll go to our fontin. And I'm going to make that 40 pixels. Hit apply. And I'll make that white. Okay. And I'm going to uncheck my lock here. 
I'm going to select my text and my border, my red border rectangle, and I'm going to center that up. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that. And I'm going to make some more text. Again, this is just all gibberish. Okay, we're going to make that fontin. I hope I'm pronouncing this font right. And I'm going to make that font, we'll make that 35. I'll hit close and we'll make that white. And I'm going to center that up on my page. Again, when you're making a presentation, you're, you know, skies are the limit for uh, your presentation file. So you can draw anything you want. And it doesn't, doesn't have to be vectors either. You can throw in some uh, raster images if you want pictures in here. Do whatever. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double click this and I'm going to select these three things and I'm going to make that font just a little bit smaller. Okay, and I'm going to duplicate this and we're going to move this down and we'll call this one, is it interesting? And I'll move that down just a little bit. Okay, and now I need to make some bullets in here. And I'll do that with our star. And let me pick a blue star. And I think that's probably pretty good. You don't have to get too sexy with your uh, bullets. But again, you can make anything that you want. I'm going to take that bullet, and we'll make that bullet just a little bit smaller. It's kind of big. And I'm going to line that with my text. So uh, we'll move that to the top, and I'll hold my Control key down, and we'll just slide that in just a little bit. I'm going to duplicate that. We'll move that copy down. We'll select our text, and we'll move that in. Now, just temporarily, I'm going to group this stuff together so I can center it on my page. Then I'm going to move it down just a little bit. So I'm just kind of eyeing that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is temporarily I'm going to group these things together. And I want my text entities to be individual text, just for this screencast, okay? And that is my slide one layer, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Let's take a look at Firefox. I hit my refresh button. I use my arrow keys. And you see that I have a guidelines for describing an object, and I have slide one. You'll notice that I don't have that master slide anymore because my master slide has been converted to a background for the rest of my slides. So that's why we only have two slides here. So we can go back and forth. Now, now that I have two slides, I want to show you a, another feature before I forget. Um, typically, when you are working on a presentation file, you have bookmarks of your slides. Well. That's a kind of handy thing to have, and uh, uh, Hannes has, has added that. We press our I key in our browser, and now we can toggle between our slides. So as you're giving a presentation, if you need to see all of your slides at once, you can see them as thumbnails and use your arrow keys to select which one you want to display. Once you highlight the one that you want, you hit the I key again, and then it'll bring that slide up. So that's kind of a nifty feature. Hanas is pretty pretty brilliant as, as far as I'm concerned because uh, 
I just love it when, when guys code stuff like this. I wish I had that kind of talent, but I don't. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and minimize that. And let's carry on. We are going to make a new layer. And I'm going to call this one slide 2. And what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to duplicate that. I'll take this, duplicate it, and I'm going to take this and duplicate it. I'm going to highlight my slide 2. Okay, and I'm going to use shift page up to move that duplicated copy to my new layer. Shift page up and shift page up. Now when I turn off slide 1, I have uh, uh, my slide 2 stuff here that I can alter. And this is just a quick way so I don't have to keep uh, putting stuff back in. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this, and I'm going to ungroup this one. It's not necessary to ungroup. You can double-click in a grouping and, and get to things like text and edit it, but I like to be sure that I've, I've ungrouped it so I don't confuse myself. Okay, and I'm going to go in here, and we'll put in observe the object. Go down to this one, call that color. We'll call this, oops, call that size. We'll call this one work, or shape. I'll hit enter, space over, and we'll make a new one called texture. Okay, for this one, we'll alter the text here. All right, and I'm going to group this together again temporarily. We'll move this up. We'll move this down just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to change this text here. And there goes my cell phone. Okay. Gather information. I'm going to make sure that that is centered. Okay. And that's my slide number two. So I have a slide one, know your topic. Slide two, gather information. Okay. So it always seems like whenever I make a screencast, I get a hundred phone calls. And right now somebody's trying to get a hold of me on my cell phone. All right. We won't let that bother us. I just won't answer it. Okay. So next thing's next here. Let's uh, make a new uh, layer. I'm going to call this one slide number three. We'll add that above. And what I need to do is, for slide number three, I need to copy some more objects so I don't have to keep or, uh, keep writing this stuff out. So what I'm going to do is right-click on this, duplicate, right-click on this, duplicate, and right-click on this, duplicate. And to get that to our new layer, we're going to use Shift Page Up. Shift Page Up. Shift page up. We can shut off slide two, get to slide three, and we can start editing. This is kind of the boring part of the screencast, just setting this thing up. So we'll put void these. And I'll go ahead and center that up. Okay, close that, and we'll alter the text here.
are just some common expressions. I wasn't quite sure what to do for a presentation and I thought about actually making a one that I would make, but I thought, nah, it would just it would just run on the screencast, so uh I thought I'd just do something quick and dirty here. Okay, and I'm gonna come down here and we're gonna get this one. I'll put cliches. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and group that. Go ahead and group that. That is slide number three. I'm going to hit save. Don't forget to save often. And finally, I'm going to add a final layer. And we'll just call this one finished. Uh, I've got to spell it right here. It would be nice. Finish. And what we'll do for our finish layer is we'll take this text right here. I'm going to right click and duplicate it and do a shift page up to move it. Turn that off. We'll get to our finish layer. And we'll put thank you here and I'll center that up and we'll put some text here See, did I spell it right? Okay, I did. Okay, we'll go ahead and center that up. And I'm going to make this, we'll make this 40, and I'm going to pick that font and font. Okay. We'll center that up on our page. I'm going to pick this text here and I'm going to adjust the kerning a little bit. And I'm going to make these here a little bit smaller. And we'll put this in the middle somewhere. Okay, that's our final frame. So I've, I've taken some of this stuff from a uh, my English handbook. All right, and let's go ahead and save this. Now let's take a look at our presentation file. Okay, we started off with our first frame here, so I'm going to hit uh, refresh to refresh our file. And when I use my arrow keys you'll see that I'm tabbing through my presentation okay now if that is all that you wanted to do was make a simple presentation you can stop here okay no effects are applied all we're doing is using our arrow keys to uh, get to the next slide of our presentation okay but that's not where all the magic stops uh, Jesse Inc has more stuff to play with and we're gonna take a look at that so I'm gonna turn that off and we're gonna to get to our slide one and I'm gonna make sure here that we get on our slide one frame our slide I guess I'm gonna to go to Jesse Inc and I'm going to use transitions okay now when I select transitions, we're going to get a new transition box. I'm going to go ahead and delete this finish. And what we have here is when I advance to the next slide, I can use a transition to fade 
or to pop or just appear okay so let's say for example I wanted the opening to fade okay so I'm gonna change my fade time we'll say 5 and actually you won't see that when it first opens because uh, you won't see the uh, the fade so we're gonna fade out okay so we'll make sure that we change that and I'm gonna hit apply okay and I'll show you how that will work I'll hit save here we'll go to an open Firefox we'll hit refresh now when I arrow we'll go back you see the fade you won't see it when the thing loads but you'll see it when you're moving back with your frames okay so I'm gonna go ahead and set that up for all of my slides so we're gonna go to effects Jesse ink transitions I'm gonna add that to slide one and this time I'm gonna add a fade to fade in and to fade out okay I hit apply I'm gonna add that to number two I'm gonna add that to number three and I'm gonna add that to our finish layer or our finish slide okay now let's close let's save let's go back to Firefox and refresh and take a look at what we've done now when I advance you see that I get a nice fade in between slides that's what the transition will do for you okay so let's go back now let's go to effects Jesse ink and let's go to let's go to effects okay now what I'm gonna do with effects let's say for example when I load slide one I only want my first bullet to be seen okay so I'm gonna highlight my second bullet I'm gonna go to effects Jesse ink effects I'll put in a one here and a two here and let's say for example I want that to pop okay and I'll show you what a pop does let's, and I'll just set the time for four there and I'll hit apply okay I'm gonna save this we'll go to Firefox we'll hit refresh now when I arrow to my second slide you'll notice that my second bullet is gone where is it okay let's say for example I'm giving my presentation and I want people to focus on that first bullet I don't want them to get ahead of me so I'm gonna hide all the rest of my bullets now when I hit my arrow key now you see my second bullet so when I'm ready for that second bullet uh, in my presentation I can just arrow and that thing will show up okay so that's a really neat feature and you can do you can apply effects to anything on your page so if you want pictures to automatically show up you can have that apply or you can apply it to pictures I'm sorry bullets any other vector art if you just want things to appear on this page you can just add an effect to it okay okay and uh, finally what I want to show you is uh, page numbering okay so let's for, let's say for example I wanted uh, I wanted page numbers on all of my slides so what I'm gonna do is add some text to represent my page number well, I got to get on there first okay and I'll just put an X here and we'll make that um, let's see how big I made it on mine here I made that about 20 pixels excuse me I'll hit enter and we'll make that white okay whoops and I'm gonna slide that page number down here okay I'll hit save and I'm gonna select I'm gonna highlight this placeholder text I'm gonna go to effects Jesse ink auto text and I'm gonna pick one of these to represent my uh, page numbering so let's say for example I just wanted to uh, um, pick a slide number here so I'm gonna I'm gonna apply that and you can try these uh, other options on your own and I'll hit close and I'll hit save 
Now when I go to Firefox and reload, you'll see that I have a number 1 here and not an X. Anywhere that I have that placeholder text on any layer, it knows to put a page number there. So let me show you how it works. I've got that X on my opening frame. I'm going to take that and duplicate it. And I'm going to shift up and add that to slide 1. Okay? I'm going to right click, duplicate this. I'm going to page up, add that to slide 2. We'll pick that text again, duplicate, shift page up, add it to slide 3. And finally, I'll do it one more time. Shift page up. And we'll add that to our finish layer. Okay? I'm going to save my document. And notice now that I have that X on every single one of my layers. Okay? So I've just duplicated it and copied it. So I'm going to hit Save. We'll go back to Firefox and we'll hit Refresh. Now, when I use my arrow keys to go to my next frame, you'll see that I have a page number in the bottom corner representing my pages or my slides. So when I go to the next frame, you see a number three, number four, and finally my last frame, I got a number five. So that's a nice little feature, very handy. Okay? And that is just about it for the screencast. Okay? Now, again, Anything that you put on a layer will represent a slide with Jesse Ink except for that master slide layer. Whatever you put on master slide will become your background. And that background can be a raster image or it can be vector art, whatever you want. If, for example, you got this thing all done and you wanted to uninstall Jesse Ink, you wanted it to remove all the JavaScript from your SVG file, what you need to do is go to Effects, Jesse Ink, and hit Uninstall Remove. And what that does is strips out all the script, all the JavaScript in the SVG file, and puts you right back to standard Inkscape SVG. Okay? And really, it is that simple. I love this. Uh, I've used it once so far uh, for a presentation at work. I knew that I would. Um, uh, it was just a small presentation that I was showing uh, but what was neat about it is that I did it online once I got done with my SVG file I put it up on my personal website uh, walked into my uh, my employer's office uh, my boss's office and I loaded this thing up on the web and I went through my presentation real quick just to show a few frames. Now, and you can add anything you want in here. PDFs, I mean anything. I mean, whatever Inkscape can bring in, you'll see it on your, uh, on your uh, slideshow. So it's, it's just really great. And what's great about it is you don't need any office software. You just need Inkscape. The free little application, Inkscape. Um, and it's really that brilliant. And really, when I do my slides, my slides are very simple anyways. I don't spend a lot of time getting really fancy with slides. I might do some fancy transitions from now uh, now and again. But really, when I make a presentation, it's just simple. So when you're doing this for yourself, maybe you want to add some gradients or whatever to your backgrounds. But again, it's all limited uh, based on what your uh, web browser will uh, display. And right now, SVG, you know, it's coming along, but uh, it's still it's still a little behind uh, the game when it comes to uh, web browsers. So that is Jesse Inc. Um, big, big, big thanks to, to Hannes. Um, he was willing to uh, to uh, make some improvements for me while I was doing a little beta, uh, beta testing for him. Um, this guy is fast, and he's incredibly, incredibly smart. Um, I just, I'm just thrilled with this. So, I hope you guys find it handy. Uh, again, um, I like to see what maybe some of you guys come up with uh, for presentations. Um, what would be neat too is to uh, is to put these presentations somewhere. Uh, for example, on our Flickr screencasters uh, site, people can upload their presentations, and uh, uh, folks can use those things for templates. 
Um, it, it, that, it, I mean, sky's the limit for this type of a stuff. And uh, I know that uh, some of you guys, when you get a hold of this, you're just going to make some beautiful things. So uh, thank you for watching. I'm Heathen X. Okay, I'm back. You thought I left, didn't you? Hey, I noticed that uh, as soon as I hit my stop button that there, I, I think I moved a little too quickly and uh, moved past something that I wanted to explain with the uh, Jesse Ink effects uh, portion of the uh, extensions. So let me get to that part. I'm going to get to my slide one. I'm going to turn off opening. Okay, now you remember that when I added the effect, uh, the pop-in effect on my slide one, which I'll show you here. Okay, you notice that pop effect right here. Well, what if I want to add additional effects? I want to add more effects, okay? So let's say, for example, I wanted to get to my slide number two, and I wanted to do the same thing, okay? Well, I do that by selecting... Uh, what I want to uh, pop in, so I'm going to go to the effects, Jesse Ink effects, and now I've used one and two on slide number one, one being my pop in effect and uh, two being the pop out. So what I want to do next is I want to add a three and a four. Now I hope I'm doing this right. This is the way that I know how to get it to work. Um, Hannes did a very fine job explaining to me how this works, um, very detailed, and he was very thorough. Um, maybe I missed that part, I don't know, but this is how it works for me. So the next uh, object that I want to add an effect to, I just change the numbers here, okay? So I'm going to hit pop here and apply, close, and I'm going to save this. We'll open up Firefox, okay, and we'll go through it again. Here is my slide number two. When I arrow over, it pops in my second bullet, okay. I'm going to arrow. I'm to my slide number three now. And now when I arrow, okay, you see that I've got that uh, extra effect in there, okay. So that's how you add more effects. So when you uh, want to put something else on here and you want it to pop in or you want it to fade or do something, uh, don't forget to go to your effects here and change your numbers, change your effect order. And I think what that's doing is adding the order in the JavaScript uh, so it knows uh, what to pop in and uh, or appear or whatever okay so I just wanted to explain uh, that little feature there um, really most of this stuff in uh, in Jesse Inc uh, the extensions that you just do a little trial and error and everything will come to you um, again have Firefox uh, loaded up right beside uh, Inkscape so as you do something in Inkscape you can save it refresh it in Firefox and see how the effect works okay you'll figure it out it's not rocket science um, I was able to figure it out rather quickly and uh, usually takes me a while to figure stuff out so uh, you guys I'm sure will do much much better so I just wanted to explain uh, that little section of the Jesse Inc. extensions. And again, thanks, uh, Hans. Um, brilliant, brilliant work. I can't thank you enough. Um, this is going to make a lot of people happy, a lot of people who do uh, presentation files. Um, so thank you very much. We all appreciate it. And thank you for watching. I'm Heathen X.